Hi, everyone, and welcome to the call. I'm going to be starting over because my microphone wasn't on at the beginning. So welcome to the call. Thank you for coming tonight. I'm going to be doing this every Thursday night at 6 o'clock. And our topic last week was our real estate investor matrix. And in that matrix, we went over using your resources wisely so that in your first few deals, you're using the resources that you have already in hand without trying to add to that or um, you know, try, try to find their skills or money. So what we're gonna do after that is the next four times, we're gonna talk about the four Fs of real estate investing. Now, the four Fs are find, fund, fix, and flip. So if you're a wholesaler, really all you have to do is find the property, okay? If you're going to do a rehab, you have to find the property, fund it, fix it, and flip it. If you're a landlord, you just have to, three things, three things, find the property, fix it, fund it, and fix it. So those are the three things for being a landlord. So the four Fs are involved in all aspects of real estate, no matter which one you choose. As a private lender, you have to fund it. Someone else finds the property, fixes it, and does all that stuff for you. So the four Fs are always involved. So tonight, we're going to go into um, how to find the deals, because that's really the first thing you need to do. At the same time, you should be looking to fund your deals. You should be looking for money. So next week, we're going to talk about funding the deals. I do have a link to um, an ebook that I wrote on finding private lenders. So you can go to that link later on in the uh, presentation and download that ebook and start to read that before um, we do the presentation next week. And that's on Wise Wealth University forward slash PV lending. Okay, and I'll show I'll show a link to that later on when we get to that point. Um, so tonight, I'm going to talk about all the different ways that you can find a deal. And I've got them on the board behind me, kind of covering some of them with my head here. Um, and what I did was I put them in green. Um, if they're easy, um, you can probably implement them without much money. Um, and if they're in red, it means they take more time, they take more money, or they take some skills. And so I'm going to go over those. If I put a star next to them, there are things that I've done. So I can speak directly to them. And the other ones I've investigated and kind of looked at the pricing, but have never put it you know, into practice. So I'm going to go over all those types of uh, marketing with you. Um, so grab a drink, wine, tea, coffee, you know, your water bottle, and um, strap in. We're going to go, we're going to go fast. But I do have an outline behind me. So I'm going to sit to the side so you can take a look at it. You don't have to write them all down now because I will be going over them as we go through the evening. So here we go. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is direct mail, and that does include letters and postcards. Some of them are fairly, some of the next ones are free. Door to door, going door to door and talking with people. Uh, driving for dollars, driving around your neighborhood. Not free, but you can be using um, your gas on your way to work. Bandit signs, they cost a little bit. I'll talk about those more later. Business cards, very inexpensive way to get your message out there. Magnetic car signs, another inexpensive way to get your message out there. Um, networking, networking, you can include flyers and business cards. You can see I have those linked up there. And we'll talk about some of the more um, expensive ones later on. All right. Let me come back into view here. So direct mail. Direct mail, um, you can use letters or postcards. Um, there's a couple different types of letters. People have heard of the yellow letter, and you've also heard of a, you know, a print, kind of a professional business letter, and you've also heard about sort of a bill letter. So I use a combination of all of those. Um, I like to hit the same people uh, three or four times with their mailing, and I use... Um, a yellow letter, then a postcard, and another postcard, depending on who I'm targeting. So I target two types of individuals. The first one are homeowners that have been in the property for a long time, as long as you can figure out from your, from your county records. And the second group are absentee landlords. Those are people that 
have the property, they might be tired of having it. Um, you can combine those and say landlords that have owned it more than 10 years, but sometimes landlords have only owned it for a couple of years and something happens in their life. Um, they move, they get sick, there's a job opening someplace else and they really want to sell that property or they have a couple of kids and they just don't have time. So you can target those two types of people, absentee owners and people who've been in their property for a long time. A long time is more than 10 years. So that's what you want to look for. So let me check down at my notes here. So when you do the yellow letter, that is done on a yellow pad of paper. Um, this is a little difficult to implement. It, it kind of works on your printer or you can outsource it. Um, you can handwrite the letter and then copy it onto yellow paper. Uh, I found yellow paper doesn't always go through my printer, but if I go to Kinko's, I can take rip off the pages from a yellow pad of paper and it will go through the Kinko's printer better than it will do mine. So I've done that before. Um, the other letter is kind of a business letter that's, you know, I'm a San Diego real estate investor um, looking to buy properties here. That's another one. The other one is a similar letter, but it's um, put in a different envelope because it's a put in a business envelope. So I'll, and I'll show you a few examples of those. And the other one I use is postcards. So the postcards, I usually use the service called click to mail um, and I'll definitely give uh, credit where credit's due. I learned about that from Chris Chico. You can find out his course on chrischico.com. I think he has one right now for, I think, $97. So it gives the postcard and exactly the details of how to do it. So you first need a relationship with your title company if you're going to get a free list. If you're going to go to list source, you're going to pay per name for the list, maybe 10 cents a name. Um, I have a relationship with a title company. I can pull 1,500 names or records um, a month, and that's you know more than plenty to get started. Because what you do with absentee landlords and also you know regular owners who've been in there a long time is you mail to them four times a year. So you're mailing to them quite often. So you pull the names once and you just keep using the same list. So, um, you know, you can find a relationship with a title company, tell them you want to farm, you want a farming list, and they'll set you up. I know with Chicago Title, uh, I can do it right online. I don't have to contact them anymore. It's an online situation. All right. So um, what do I do with that letter? I put it in a regular plain old, you know, envelope. Um, and I'll show you a couple of examples of the envelopes that I use. So you use an envelope, you use a return address label and kind of a fancy stamp. I don't use the, the flag stamps, they're too basic. I want a nice big picture stamp that people notice. And then you hand address the envelope. I mean, you can find someone on Craigslist to hand address it. I have my kids hand address them. Sometimes if I'm watching something on TV, I will hand address a bunch of envelopes. Very easy to outsource that. Um, you need to fold them up. Another way, and stuff them, put the stickers on. Kids love putting the stickers on, by the way. That's a fun thing for them. Um, the other thing you can do is, is do um, what they call lumpy mail. So in lumpy mail, you put something in the envelope that makes it feel tactile. You can feel something's weird about the envelope. Hold up an envelope while I'm doing that. And you, if someone goes, oh, I wonder what's in there, you know, and they want to open the envelope. So what are two things I put in lumpy mail? One is sometimes I very simply just put a paper clip right on the, the letter and fold it up. Sometimes I put a post-it note on there if I want to remind them something. I stick the post-it note on with the paper clip, and then they can stick the post-it note on their fridge. Um, you can put in candy, but it has to be really thin. Now, the, the, the post office has a lot of different requirements. So I've gone to some of these little foam stickers that you can buy at Michael's, Walmart, a big container of foam stickers, and sometimes they sell them cheaply when they're out of season. So these are kind of like the landscape ones. And I put that piece of foam in the envelope, and it makes people open it up. So what does the envelope look like? I've got it. I can't show the address on here, but here's what happens when the envelope comes back. So let me show that to you. 
um, you see a return address label on the top and a nice fancy stamp. So I used several return address labels. Um, that was kind of a house one. Here's another one that came back. Um, and that one is my spring flower one. And the other return address label. This is kind of the, the one for barbecuing. Looks like you're doing a summer barbecue. So how do I get all these different labels and how do I do it inexpensively? Well, I use um, Avery labels online. And I usually buy the labels from Office Depot. I don't buy the Avery labels. The Office Depot ones are actually cheaper. You can buy a big package of them in bulk. And you um, do your design on averylabels.com, and you just print them on your own printer. You can pick any picture you want. You can upload a picture, and you put your return address on there. Now, when I put the return address, let me, let me show you this one again. You see my address there. I've put apartment C. It's really a suite C, but I want people to think it comes from an individual person so they'll open it up and not a business. So I put apartment C. It still comes back to my mailbox. All these, all these letters came back to my mailbox, okay, because they had the wrong address on them. Um, when you're using addresses from the um, title company, they're coming from the people's tax records. So this is the address where they mail the tax bill to. And if people don't update their um, address when they move, especially if it's, a, if it's a rental property, and they're moving their home address, the tax bill may not come to them the next year. They may have to you know, go you know, call the county and pay for it or whatever and make it forwarded to them. So they have to update their home address for their rental properties in order for, to receive the mail. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's what the envelopes look like. Um, so what, what do I do? How do I get the list? When I get the list, it's usually in an Excel spreadsheet. And what I do is do a mail merge with that. I mail merge the addresses that I want to put on the envelopes, but I don't put them on address labels. I just mail merge them as if they're address labels, and I just run them through the printer with um, – uh, as if they're return address labels. And I just use regular paper, so I'm going to flash it real quickly up here because I can't show you the addresses. So that's one that I've done, um, and that's one of the lists I've used. So as I go through it and hand address the envelopes, I can just put a check mark when I've, when I've mailed them. So you'll see that one had quite a few check marks because I've, you know, I've done that list three or four times. If you see a red uh, yellow circle, that's because it came back and had the wrong address. So as soon as it comes back, I circle it, and then I take a bunch of them at once and spend time looking up online and trying to find, you know, what the person's new address is using these different, um, you know, white pages or people search or something like that, people tracker. Uh, you can get a, an account for, I think, $39 to um, look up as many addresses as you want. So that's my address label. Um, the, the business letter, I'll show it to you. I don't have any yellow letter examples right in front of me. I think they're over there. So I have kind of a business letter. And you do have to sign it. You should sign it in blue ink. That's what I just, just showed you. Um, and you just fold that and put it in the envelope. And then the last thing I put on is the stamp. You really don't want to put the stamp on ahead of time because what if you mess up the envelope? So the stamp's the last thing because that's the thing you paid for. So you put that on it at the end and um, send them all out. So that's how you do your your um, mailings. You've got to pick your area, pick your street, um, go through the title company, get your list, print it out as if it's going to be on address labels, but you just print it on regular paper so you can write on it. You also go to Avery Labels and do your return addresses labels, put those on every um, envelope. Then you hand address, stuff the envelope, use a paper clip or a little, little foam dealy or a thin piece of candy, um, whatever you want to make it make people curious to open it up. I think at Easter once we put um, some of that um, the green grass that you use in Easter. We stuffed a little bit in each envelope and it just kind of made it a little thicker. People wanted to open it. So it, was, it was a fun project. Okay, so that's direct mail. Um, I send out letters. I sometimes use the the yellow letter or the the business letter there. And you know the heading is. I'm a San Diego investor looking to buy your San Diego property. 
I also do the postcards. I use a modified version of the postcard from uh, Chris Chico. The other thing you'll go, you're going to want to need is a phone. You can use a Google Voice phone number. That can be forwarded to your house phone, your cell phone, your partner's cell phone. You can forward it to wherever you want. So Google Voice number is free. Uh, you can also buy a track phone that has a local number and just have that number being used in your letters. Um, in that way, your letters, when people call that phone, you're only paying for the calls that they make. So you don't have a monthly charge. The phone's just sitting there waiting for it to ring, you know, and you know if someone calls that number that it's from the letter, so you can answer it right away. So you have to carry that extra track phone around with you. That's another inexpensive way, you know, to have another phone uh, without an expensive uh, monthly phone service. The other service I use is Grasshopper. Um, you can get an 800 number or just a regular local number, and you can um, plug in some scripts that um, will speak to the homeowner when they call the number, and then it can forward to your phone as well. So those are the services uh, that I use in association with, with my direct mail. It's really the, one of the biggest and best ways to get good deals. Um, people call me from those letters. Um, most of the deals that I get did not come from uh, the MLS or uh, realtors because they're a little more expensive when they come through a realtor. But you definitely, definitely need to network um, with realtors for those deals. We'll talk a little bit more about networking at the, at the bottom. So the next thing on the list is door-to-door. Um, -door. So door-to-door -door would include uh, door knocking, um, leaving flyers and business cards, um, as you go. Um, so business cards, I get those at Vista Print. Um, you can get a couple of different business cards. It can be, you know, landlord. It can be um, foreclosure business cards. It can be, do you want to sell your home business cards? And then you can also do, a, I use a half page flyer so I can get two per page. And I'll leave that at the door if the person's not home. If they're home, I'll hand them, you know, my business card because we've already had, it, had a little bit of a chat. Um, and there's several ways you can do the door-to-door. -door. So one way to do the door-to-door -door is to get your list from the title company, look it up, look up the houses you want to target, and then go door knock some of those doors that you got from the title company. Not the absentee owners, that won't help you. Those people don't, don't the owners don't live at the, at the rental. But the, the owners who've been in the house a long time, it's a very good way to check that you're getting a good search. So when we go door to door for our long-term owners, we say to ourselves, oh, this must be just right because these people have been in the house a long time. So that's, that's very helpful. You can also get a foreclosure list and go door knocking on the uh, foreclosure list. In that case, you also want to have a business card or a flyer to leave. Uh, driving for dollars, um, you can incorporate driving for dollars with your direct mail. So that's, that's the next thing on the list, driving for dollars. Um, whatever addresses you find when you drive for dollars and you're looking for houses that need some work um, you know there's newspapers in the driveway they didn't cut the grass there's a, the bushes aren't trimmed I, I trained my kids since they were like six to be able to find absentee owner properties you know rental properties so then you can go back and write those addresses down and look up the owners um, either at your county recorder's office or online if, if, if that's available in your state. I know it's not available in California, um, but it is available in a lot, of, a lot of states. Phoenix, Texas, you know, you can find the owner pretty quickly. Um, their, counties, their counties are, uh, websites are online. So incorporate driving for dollars and then mail to them, okay? Um, What's the next thing we got? We have banded signs. All right, banded signs um, do work in certain areas. They're not that useful in um, really populated areas, cities, um, in the nicer areas because the police take them away. Um, other investors take them down. Um, I have put them out on Friday nights and taken them back up on Sunday. Um, there are some cities that have code enforcement that actually pulled them on Saturday and Sunday. So when I went back to get them, 
um, I only had like one out of 20 signs still up on a Sunday night. So that's one thing to think about. Um, you can put banded signs out a little bit further onto the more rural areas where they have less, you know, police coverage seems to work better in those areas. Doesn't work as well in Southern California. We tend to use direct mail more often. But uh, bandit signs can be ordered from banditsigns.com. It's where I've gotten mine. Um, what I like to do is test, test, test. So I order blank ones, and they're yellow, and we handwrite on them with a huge black magic marker. And you can get the really big markers at Home Depot. They they have a really they have a fat tip about this fat, and you can write write really big on those. Um, and so you test your message and and see how that works. It works really well to put the signs on vacant houses because sometimes the owner then calls you or the neighbors call you and tell you who the owner is. So it's a really good thing. And those signs stay up longer because the police think someone had permission to put the signs on the yard. That's just a little, little trick of mine. All right, what do we have next? Okay, business cards, I talked about that. Magnetic car signs, excellent way to find a property. You're not going to get all your deals that way. You probably get one or two a year um, from your magnetic sign. And you can also order those from Vistaprint. Um, I've also ordered them, I think, from, not from Bandits. I'm not sure if I got, I think I got them from Bandit Signs as well. And those are thicker. The ones in Vistaprint are a little thin, um, but they both work. Um, at banditsigns.com, you can also order kind of generic signs that investors like to use and just uh, write in your phone number. But there's some avoid foreclosure and different um, signs like that. So bandit signs, um, magnetic signs on your car, these things really attract attention. Um, you can also get, if you go to Caterpillar, you can get kind of a, a special phone number that's easy to remember. So that's good for bandit signs. Uh, networking. Networking's next. Networking, um, you've got to network with realtors. Realtors can sometimes find you the deals. They have um, pocket listings of their, you know, people they know that just put something up and it's not ready to show yet. And they'll probably call you first, let you look at it. Um, we did find a lot of our REOs through realtors. They would call us before it was listed. And that, that was really helpful. Um, you should also network at real estate clubs. Uh, I've done a lot of my networking there and it's a good place to find other wholesalers and private lenders. So go to some of your local real estate clubs and uh, interact with people. Give me your business card. Um, call them after you get your business card because if you never call them, it wasn't really a network. All right. So those are kind of what I call the green the green ways to get deals, you know, they're green, they're cheap, they're um, they're not all fast, but there's something you can implement. Pick one of those things and implement it this weekend. Uh, you might not get all the direct mail done, but get your return address labels done or go buy the stamps or make a connection with a title rep. Um, order a magnetic sign from um, banditsigns.com or Vistaprint. Order some new business cards. Those are all things that you can do in relatively short time. Okay, now on the other side of the board over here um, are things that are a little bit harder to do. Um, print ads, you can definitely put a print ad in. You, you pay money for it. Um, some of the little penny saver ads that, that, uh, that get distributed for free, Suburban Shopper, they are little free things that come in the mailbox. Um, I haven't gotten any deals from them. I used to put ads there. Old school is put ads in the paper. Um, didn't really get any calls from there except for other investors. Um, broadcast TV uh, cost a lot of money. Uh, you might not be ready for that until you have a lot of deals going. Get your deal flow going first. Social media. You can definitely post and connect with people on Facebook groups. There's a lot of real estate groups on Facebook as well as Google+. Plus. Um, and it's a way to contact with um, other wholesalers or people who might want to fund your deal or other partners, people who might want to partner on the deal with you. Um, so social media, websites, and SEO kind of, kind of go together there. Um, I have some websites that I've used to um, attract sellers. 
Um, but you have to do a lot of SEO with the website to get uh, to get it ranked in the search engines. So if that's something that you're really good at, that maybe that's what you do in your you know job, that would be great. But to start out with, I wouldn't start with websites because you'll spend a lot of time on it and you won't get that many leads from the website. A lot of people try to sell you, you know, a website. Um, I spent money on, on the SEO where I've hired virtual assistants to do a lot of the SEO for me. And I just really didn't get a lot of traction from it. Um, I think it has to be a, a concerted effort. Um, certainly once you can put the website on your um, print media, your flyers, and your business cards, and then get people to go to the website for more information. That's definitely um, a way to go. They don't feel as threatened by going to a website and reading the information as they do by calling you. Um, that's why we have the recorded messages on Grasshopper, because they can call and not be intimidated. So websites are a nice, easy way to you know, kind of get their information, give them a free report, but not, um, not be too intimidating. Um, so the next ones are billboards and bus stops. I've looked at the pricing on those. I've never decided to um, buy them. You will see some of the bigger companies using those. Um, They'll use billboards and uh, certainly bus stop seats. I know realtors, realtors definitely use those a lot. Um, and some of the big home investor uh, companies use billboards. Um, so those are the more expensive things. So definitely you want to work on the, the green uh, ways to find deals uh, that are, that are uh, on the, up on the board there. On the, I want to say left side or right side, but I'm not sure when I turn around which way it's going to be. So um, I'm going to back away and let you write down a few of those in case you didn't get a chance to, um, you know, while we took some notes. And while I'm doing that, I will look over at the comments and see if there's any comments or questions, you know, that I can answer for you. All right, take a look, take a few notes, and I'll be back in a sec. All right, I hope you're able to write write down some of those ways to find deals. I did get one question coming in, um, and that is, Janice, if I have no money to get started, how do I get a deal? What's the best method to get started? What I would do if I didn't have any marketing budget, and I, I certainly advise that you, you get one as soon as possible, but I would uh, make a connection with a title company um, and get a list of either absentee owners or, well, absentee owners you'd still have to mail to, which would cost some money. So absentee owners or uh, owners that have had their property for quite a long time. And then I would do some door-to-door. -door. My, my speakers were giving me some back background noise there. I would go door to door and talk to some of these people. I'd have a flyer and a business card and I would leave that 
at the houses um, where no one was home. Um, that's going to cost you the least amount of money. Driving for dollars, you can do on the way to work. Take a different street on the way to work. When you're out going, you know, on a Saturday with your family, go down some different roads and you're, you're out going on a hike and write down some different areas that you see where maybe there's some houses that need some work. Look those up. Go, down, go to the county records because that's a free place where you can do that and look that up. Um, I was thinking about one more thing about, about your websites. You can definitely put your websites on your magnetic car sign. That, that would be an inexpensive way to go. It wouldn't cost that much. So uh, get a magnetic card sign, some business cards, print some flyers on your own printer, and um, get your list from the title company. And that's a great way to get started. As soon as you have a little bit of money just to buy the stamps, start doing that direct mail. If you're going to stuff the letters yourself, go ahead. Do 100, 200, 300 at a time and be able to handle the calls as they come in. Don't, you know, don't do as many. Do you know, 300 a week. Make that your goal. Um, you know, don't outsource it at first because that costs, costs more. You're just going to pay for the stamps initially so you know 50 cents a letter all right and that is the best way for you guys to find some deals thank you all for coming to the training tonight next week i'm going to be talking about how to fund the deals and i'm going to share with you uh the website there's a couple links um that i'm going to put up here so that you can uh get your free ebook about uh, finding private lenders and, and start looking through that you'll get a few um, emails that go with it to prompt you um, to implement what, what's in the ebook so let me give you a couple links that you can um, stay in touch with me on um, here's my uh, link on twitter i'm the pink professor and that's why i wore the shirt today it's quite warm here in san diego so it's a warm day i'm kind of reminding everyone that we're warm sorry if you guys have snow or bad weather but it's kind of hot here today so follow me on Twitter at Pink Professor. And the other one would be to go to wisewealthuniversity.com forward slash hangouts and subscribe to the weekly hangouts. You'll get an, an email automatic reminder about the email, about the hangout and the topic for each week. So that's a good way to keep in touch. I only send you know that one email reminding you about the hangout. So that's another place to go back over there and I'm going to share um, with you a screenshot just so you can look at the um, let's see I'm going to show you exactly where the um, You saw that. Okay, that's, let me see. Here we go. All right, so that is the private lenders page. It's called wisewealthuniversity.com forward slash PV lending. If you go to that page, you'll be able to enter your name and email and um, download my ebook on how to find private lenders. Um, you can do more deals and bigger deals. If you have your private lending already lined up and hard money is very very expensive and sucks all the profit out of the deal so that's my little um lesson for tonight uh, let me go back to the um, stop the screen share there for a minute all right anyway um those are the things that you can uh do to get ready for next week's call um, let me just check the messages, see if there's any more comments. All right, remember, try doing some door-to-door -door work. I know it's a little bit harder um, to get off the ground, but at least get your list from the title company. So, you know, your your task before next week is get that ebook and go to your private lenders and I mean go to your title company and get a list of absentee owners 
or owners who've owned their property for a long time, more than 10 years, and you're going to get ready to door knock or at least get a flyer ready, get your business cards ready. One of those, one of those items. All right. Thank you everyone. And we'll see you next Thursday, same time, same location, Facebook, Google plus my website, um, or on the wise wealth university page on Google plus. Thank you and have a great night.